Hello guys and back. Welcome to my YP channel. This is a singer channel voice. Okay, I'm not done yet with <laughs> biological chemistry. Chemistry. This is part two, right? But this time we will go directly to the discussion of the four main classes of macromolecules meaning to say uh, the center for biochemistry. But before that, I may be able to discuss a little bit who is the father of modern biochemistry. Anybody else? <laughs> if we have the father of modern chemistry, which is Antoine Lagosian, okay, we have also father of modern biochemistry. Okay, his name is Carl Alexander Newberg. Again, Carl Alexander Newberg. He was born on July 29, 1977, and died on May 30, 1956, based on my research. Okay, these studies focused on alcohol fermentation due to enzymatic actions. Meaning to say, he explained the enzymatic reactions, the application of enzymes and catalytic reactions during alcohol fermentation. And also, he also studied the carboxylase, carboxylase, this one, right, carboxylase, I will show you. It's very difficult to pronounce, right? Okay. He discovered the carboxylase. Okay, let's wait for a while. Okay, carboxylase. This one. This one. Okay, this is the carboxylase. Okay, so usual and ASE is an enzyme. So specifically, this carboxylase composed of carbon, right? Because carboxylase from the word itself. So he discovered this one through the reaction of. Pyruvic acid. Anybody who's on the pyruvic acid? Okay, like that. So, uh, these are his contributions, and he studied a lot also regarding biochemistry, not only for his discovery and alcohol fermentation, I mean, reactions, but so many things about biological substances. I cannot, you know, further elaborate his status. We can just only summarize it that he is really the father of modern biochemistry. Mr. Carl Alexander Newberg, age 1977 to May 1956. Okay. Carl. One, Carl Alexander Newberg. Okay, like I got that. But before going to the four main classes of macromolecules as biological substances, focus on study of biochemistry, we need to start with basic understanding of water because the water is solvent of life. Okay, and water is life. Okay. The earth is composed of 75% water, but three fourths of the planet Earth is made of water. The paddy of water could be the sea, the ocean, the lake, the river, 
anything with the value of water. So 33 over 4, 34 percent. So human being also approximately have also that uh, significant percent composed of our body. Okay, in our body, we can survive without water. And then all the biological substances have relation or interaction also to water. Okay, especially during uh, metabolism, the removal of wastes from our body. So there are biological substances that will not go along with the water. Okay, that's why it will become harmful or because it's thick to the main organs in which it's no longer needed from our body. Okay, so those are hydrophobic substances, meaning to see meaning to say it is a water hating, meaning it will not go along with the water, it will not react to the water, or has a less affinity to the water, or reaction, you know, affinity, right? Attachment in English term, like that. So those are hydrophobic substances. So a water hating, or meaning to say it has a low affinity to water, doesn't go directly along with the water, showing the removal of our wastes okay in our body like that so there are also biological substances that are hydrophilic meaning hydrophilic is what we love they will go directly with water when it will be removed outside from our body okay so it is having a high affinity to water there are also uh, biological substances like that. So we can say categorically that there are water insoluble and there are also water not soluble or soluble to water or insoluble to water. Okay? That if insoluble to water, that is hydrophobic. If soluble to water, that is hydrophilic. Okay? So, so substances can be categorically <laughs> classified as hydrophilic substances or hydrophobic substances in terms of the relation of the reaction of water. Okay, that's true. Now we'll go back to the basic concept of water. Okay, so water, water composed of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So basically H2O. We'll start for the basic because so that we can understand further as we go along to the four main classes of macromolecules, macromolecules in biochemistry as biological substances as the center of study of the biochemical engineers and the biochemists. Okay, like we already discussed that a while ago, right? Okay. H2, my gosh, H, oh, I have no little already. Okay. Oh. Water is a key for survival. Without water, nobody will exist in this world because plants and animals need water. Okay? The significance of water is for living organism survival and also for the regulation of the climatic and weather changes in the planet Earth. Okay, so that is okay. H2O. As simple as that, H2O. So there are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Okay, like that. Later, we'll be able to show to you the hydrogen banding between hydrogen and oxygen. And we need to know how many electrons in the outermost shell of hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom so that we can understand further the hydrogen banding existing on that. Okay, so that we can also identify if it is water is a polar molecule or a non-polar molecule something like that okay so so hydrogen hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe lightest 
element in the universe. It's a little bit of theory, okay? We go to the basics first. Sometimes this will come up in the chemistry examination or in the board examination if your course involves sciences, right? Particularly BS chemistry, BS chemistry students, chemical engineering students, BS biology, something like that. Interrelated courses that involve pure sciences, okay? So, like this. Hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe, okay, that has an atomic weight of 1.008. Okay, 1.008. So, the point something there is negligible. 1.008. So, 1.008 grams per mole. Okay, this one. 1 grams per mole is the atomic weight of water. Okay, so this is atomic number, atomic weight, but the atomic number is also 1. The same lang siya. Okay? You understand? Atomic weight is 1.008, but the atomic number is flat at 1. Okay? Like that. And hydrogen also can exist as a hydrogen gas during the addition in a chemical combination reaction. Chemical reactions, right? I already discussed the five types of chemical reaction a while ago. So, those chemical reactions, if it involves hydrogen, it will turn to hydrogen gas if you add that in a chemical reaction. But if you try to put that as hydrogen alone, you need to put H2. It's just like H. Okay, like this H only. Okay? Free element H. But if you will try to add this in a combination reaction, for example, oxygen gas plus H2, something like that. So oxygen gas plus H2 gas is equals to water. When you balance the equation, you will never say oxygen gas plus H only. Okay? The usage is very important. You will only put H2 in the chemical reaction. But if you want to try to write that alone in defining that one, what's the purpose of this H atom all about, then you do have to put H2. Okay? You understand? For example, I put H2 plus oxygen gas is equal to H2O. Okay? Like that. Okay? Okay. For example, this one. Hydrogen gas in the upper portion plus oxygen gas equals to 2 moles of water. I balance already the chemical reaction, but H2, I put H2, not only H. Because if you will put only H, that's wrong. Okay? You will put that as H2 always in a chemical reaction, not an H. You will only put H if you are referring only a single H atom. Okay? Which is the H element on E. Okay? So if you put that in a chemical reaction, it will exist as a diatomic atom already which is H2. 2 stands for di. So diatomic element, H2. So this one is monoatomic, H, because there's no 2 subscript or H alone. So hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe. Okay? Like that. And now we go to oxygen. Okay. Oxygen is the most abundant element in Earth, in the planet Earth, okay? Just remember this question, most abundant. I think I remember this came up in the chemical engineering for examination in day two. Most abundant. I remember only most abundant 
element in the planet Earth. Actually, if we try to think the the free air, which is composed of 21% oxygen and nitrogen 79% in the atmosphere that God gave to us, you may wonder why, Sir Sater, why nitrogen is not the abundant element since it is greater than oxygen, which is oxygen is only 21% and nitrogen is only 79%. That will explain later in the planet Earth. Okay. Oxygen is the most abundant element in the planet Earth, while hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe. Okay? Why did I say that oxygen is the most abundant element on Earth, not the nitrogen? Okay? Like that. Because oxygen is reactive. Okay? reactive so this is unstable so it will react to any inorganic compound directly and organic compound directly okay and he is very uh, she is very or this oxygen is flexible enough okay but this nitrogen atom is an inert gas inert meaning non-reactive okay so this N2 will never be up to other, you know, properties, chemical properties, something like that. Because this is a, a nitrogen is inert, I think so, okay? Inert. That's why we know we have nitrogen gas, okay? Inert. But oxygen is very active, something like that, okay? Understand already? So that's why. Okay. So we, we go now to the discovery okay remember combustion process right we always add oxygen okay like that to produce carbon dioxide and water uh, hydrocarbon or inorganic compound plus oxygen gas through rapid oxidation will always produce carbon dioxide plus water or in the process also of photosynthesis oxygen is very important and also the oxygen is everywhere through the cycle of the photosynthesis could either be it is a Calvin cycle in direct indirect light reaction and the you know and the direct light reaction which is the photosynthesis okay like that so two stages of photosynthesis right if you can remember I discussed it already right okay oxygen is very important and we will not survive without oxygen not nitrogen okay we don't need that much nitrogen though it is very important in the you know production of protein so protein has carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen but not that really you know important as the oxygen okay that's the the main reason behind oh my god and also oxygen can be combined with hydrogen okay like that to produce water which is the solvent of life and uh which is water is life okay actually also nitrogen will react to hydrogen to produce ammonia but ammonia is not uh, life okay it is not very important to human life it is only important in the manufacture of fertilizer like that in the urine process that's why we have urea and h3 ammonia right but water is the basic you know uh, what we call it could be a polymer h2 is a polymer also because of one uh, monomer of oxygen plus monomer of hydrogen okay like that later we will discuss also to you what is a polymer what is a monomer what's those terms all about <laughs> something that i may be confused oh my gosh okay so we will now go to the discovery so uh the scientist who discovered hydrogen is Mr. Henry Cavendish. Okay. Henry Cavendish. I think this that came up in the word examination also. Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen. Okay.
Henry Cavendish. Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen. By the way, also oxygen can exist also as O3. Okay, ozone. Three atoms of oxygen. Ozone, which is uh, ozone layer of the sun because it protects the ozone. Okay, ozone formula is three atoms of oxygen. And it can exist also as O2, oxygen gas, okay? So, that's why oxygen is the most abundant element in the planet Earth. So, who discovered uh, oxygen? Jules Presley, okay? Jules Presley discovered oxygen. Discovered oxygen. Oxygen, okay, like that. Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen. Charles Presley discovered oxygen. Okay, please, please input that in your brain because these are basic uh, chemistry. Sometimes it will come out to the board examination or any examination related to science. Okay, like that. Okay, since we know that already. We go now to the molecular structure of H2. As I said earlier, that is a polymer because it involves units of monomers. <laughs> so we consider H as a monomer, hydrogen and oxygen as a monomer also. So don't confuse with the element because we are just using a monomer in the purpose that we are dealing with biochemistry, okay? Because Mostly biochemistry focus the polymers, okay, and the monomers like that. Okay, so we have H2O. And now we let structurize structurize <laughs> the water formula molecular structure. So this is H2O my gosh, like this. Oxygen has a six electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, like this. So oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. This one. Six electrons in the outermost shell of oxygen. Okay, and we have two atoms of hydrogen. It will be up there, okay, like that. Okay. Hydrogen. This one. Hydrogen. Okay, and let's connect. Okay. Like this. Like this. So. So what is the balance number of electrons? There are four electrons remained, okay? That was not, that were not shared, okay? So these are leftover or unbalanced electrons, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, right? And then H2O. So, if there are an equal shade of electrons, so this is polar, okay? Though we are dealing with hydrogen banding here, so this is also called polar covalent band. That's why polar molecule is water. Water is a polar molecule, okay? Okay, water is a polar molecule because there are four electrons unshared. We need to say there's an, an equal sharing of electrons. So polar covalent band. Okay, polar covalent band 
specifically equal to hydrogen bonding. Okay. Okay. So polar covalent band or hydrogen bonding. Why this is called the hydrogen bonding? Because you try to bond the hydrogen and oxygen alone. There's no other elements that are bonded there. So if there are other elements such as carbon or nitrogen, it could no longer call as hydrogen bonding. Okay, be careful. So this is exclusive only for H2O because hydrogen are being bonded, okay, to oxygen. But if it involves carbon, nitrogen, and so forth, that is no longer called a hydrogen bonding. But this is specifically called polar covalent band, which means an equal sharing of electrons. So not perfectly shared the electrons of oxygen to hydrogen, okay, like that. And now, because so we need also to discuss a little bit with uh, water, you know, the surface tension, the adhesion, the cohesion, like this, and then the specific heat of water, the heat of vaporization of water, like that, the density of water. So you may wonder why, for example, in cold regions, in our planet Earth, the ice, okay, the ice, you know ice, I-C-E, okay, like that. So I-C-E, see water has high density to compare to ice, okay, like that. Water has high density compared to ice, okay. You know already, okay? Like that. So it will not float. Okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. It will not float to the sea because it is less dense and water has high density compared to ice. Okay? And if you take note also, that the uh, water globally in all regions of the world, 75% right? And there are also places in all over the world that has no ice, right? Only in the North Atlantic pool, that's cold areas that have ice. So meaning to say the mass of this ice is not really that big compared to the mass of the body of water, okay? So of course the mass of water is really B, then it is also density B, or the density is higher also, okay? If the mass is higher, the density is also higher, right? So density of the water is higher than the density of the ice. That's, that's why ice will never float. I'm referring to the ice and the, the big ice, not the ice in the refrigerator, okay? Like that, okay? That's the reason. And water exists in three phase. It will become solid through freezing point. Okay, at zero degrees Celsius, and it will become water naturally as a liquid. Okay, and it will become a vapor or the gas state during evaporation. A process for a change from liquid to vapor during evaporation. Okay, like that. Okay, now we go to the specific heat of water. Actually, water is a high specific heat, okay, like that. So we have the sun, and the sun produces solar radiation, okay? You know solar radiation? So radiation is one form of transmitting heat apart from heat transfer due to convection, heat transfer due to conduction, and it transfer due to radiation. Since the sun has a radiant heat energy, so that will come the solar radiation that it will produce heat, okay? And it will be uh, absorbed by the planet Earth. Since the planet Earth has also water, it will absorb the heat, okay? Since you could imagine the heat of the sun is very hot, right? And then why the water is not very hot? So possibly the water is also very hot because uh, water receives heat from the sun, which is very hot, 
So what's the reason behind that? Okay. What's the reason why the water in the planet Earth is not hot when in fact it absorbs heat from the solar radiation process from the sun? Okay. This is because <laughs> this is because the water has high specific heat. It has a slight changes on its own temperature or me due to that process. Okay? Like that. And then after it, it absorbs heat, it will also uh, undergo evaporation or evaporative cooling. Okay? And this time the water also has heat of vaporization during the evaporation or evaporative cooling. So this is the quantity of heat required by one gram okay, of liquid water to a gaseous state. So this is the definition of heat of vaporization. Okay, like that. So as we can remember in our thermodynamics, if we place again the formula always repeated to you at this class, right? The Q is equal to MCPDT. The specific heat unit is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, right? So that is the specific heat. Okay, like that. So that's already high. high. <laughs> I don't know why. One only one high. Why? It's, it's not literally on the figure, I think so. It's all about the general concept. Okay, that the water has high specific heat that it can regulate its own temperature or slight changes on the in its own temperature, even though the water will absorb heat from the solar radiation of the sun. Okay? Like that. Imagine you will boil the water up to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? And then the sun has too much temperature. It's not it's above 100 degrees Celsius. And then why the water will not absorb all the heat of the sun? Okay? So supposedly the water also will be boiling and all of us will die. Just like how when we make a coffee, okay? Because you know, we, when we make a coffee and boil water, okay, it will reach to 100 degrees Celsius. That's why the water will boil, right? The vapor pressure of the water will be equal to the vapor of the pressure of the surrounding, the liquid surrounding, something like that. That's the definition of the boiling point, right? Okay, now, if 100 degrees Celsius also. So all of us will die because that's too hot. So we need to say it will be regulated due to the concept that water has high specific heat that it can regulate its own temperature at slight changes only. It will never reach 100 degrees Celsius by natural process, okay? Through absorption of heat, through to solar radiation. Okay, you understand now about that, okay? Now, we go also to other property, physical property of water, which is the specific gravity, okay? Anybody knows what is the specific gravity of water? <laughs> I also forgot my question. <laughs> so I only understand that uh, any specific gravity of the substance will be the density of the substance divided by the density of the water. It is correct. Specific gravity of a substance is equal to substance over the density of water. So the density of water will be always our basis of calculation. I am correct in chemistry, right? Since we know the density of water is always one grams per ml, right? That is our constant for water. That's it. And we know the density of a substance by looking at any table, by looking at the physical properties, by using the, you know, at the end of the chemistry books or chemical engineers and looking at the density of a substance. And then, for example, if I will get the specific gravity of chlorine, then I have already the density of water as our basis, as our denominator, and I have the, the density of chlorine based on the, you know, table I've seen I've seen <laughs> on the books that I can divide it to and I can obtain a specific variety of chlorine. So the basis will always be water, something like that. But I am not really sure. Oh my gosh. Like that. Huh? Specific gravity of a substance is equals to the density of a substance divided by the density of water. 
Okay, the density of water will always be equal to its standard value, which is one gram per ml. Or if you review in your book, okay, my gosh, something like that. Okay, now after that, density, heat of vaporization, specific heat, like that. And you know also the formula of heat, right? Is equals to MCPDT, like that. Okay, through that formula, it's very useful. Okay, and then we go now to the surface tension. Okay, this is the time where cohesion and addition uh, properties are very essential also. Okay, like that. For example, a plant, a plant will absorb water from the ground first going to the you know steam and to the you know the fruits and the leaves. So that's called uh, cohesion process of the water. And addition will be the reverse. Okay, from the top to the down, something like that. Okay, and then uh, this surface tension is the ability or the physical property of water to determine uh, how difficult it is that the water surface will stretch like this or will cut like that. Water. If you put water in the pail or in the, you know, in the gallon or let's say any container that's an open top, something like that. So the water is plain. You will attach that one, so it's undergo a cohesion process, right? Because it's very uniform, plain, like that. Okay, and then you put the any kinds of insects, for example, the the ant, the grasshopper, uh, what else, mosquito, or any insects, they can walk and run to the surface of the water. They will not go down, they will not sink, okay? They can run, they can walk in the water. Why? Because of the surface tension, okay? This is the reason, okay? So the ability of the water to determine if it is uh, stretch, or you can stretch or you can pop on one the surface of the water to determine, okay? The ability of the water to determine uh, how difficult it is to stretch or to cut the surface of the water something like that so let's surface tension okay that's the reason why the, ant, the insects can walk and run on the water and they will never sink okay because of surface tension okay like that okay going to water water also is very important in the hydrolysis reaction okay so if you add salt and water so that this hydrolysis reaction it will produce uh, acid and a base, okay, like that, hydrolysis. And it's also important in the polymer synthesis, okay, in the hydration synthesis and in the dehydration synthesis. Hydration synthesis is mainly uh, adding of water molecule to the particular uh, polymer, something like that, or monomer. And then uh, dehydration, removal of water or loss of water. Okay, of, of the following polymer or something like that, okay, or substance like that. But the clue there is addition of water, okay, hydration synthesis, okay, removal of water is dehydration synthesis. English D, dehydration meaning removal of water. I just add synthesis because that is a one type of chemical reaction in organic chemistry, okay, like the polymerization reaction, something like that, okay. Polymers. So polymers are mostly uh, carbon, okay, or carbohydrates like uh, protein, a lipid, a nucleic acid, or something like that. Okay, or, that, or those are polymers. But polymers is a smaller molecules only compared to the lipid, the protein, and the carbohydrates. Okay, something like that. So we discussed first the water. Any questions so far so that we can understand properly before going to the forming classes of the uh, macromolecules, okay? Like that. Any, any questions so far about water? Okay, molecular structure, the tanning, the physical property. The boiling point of water is always 100 degrees Celsius, okay? And the freezing point is always zero degrees Celsius, something like that. And other physical properties of water are listed in the Chemical Engineer's Handbook 
index or in a chemistry index. You can put, you can see there the specific surface tension at certain temperature, specific density at certain temperature, like that, specific heat capacity or heat capacity at a certain temperature. Maybe you can say from zero degrees Celsius to one degrees. There's equivalent uh, specific heat through a table, and you will just go there. And if you have the formula, then you can substitute your equation, especially the Q is equal to NCPDT in a problem solving, right? Okay, like that. Not only that, that the specific heat also, value is there also. All physical properties of chemical substances, including water, is always found in the chemical engineer's index regarding physical properties. There are also chemical properties, but we are referring to physical properties. Because these are physical properties, right? Freezing point, melting point, boiling point, diffusion rate, like a density, okay? Mass, volume, pressure, pressure is refers to the physical properties of a substance, right? Okay, like that. Okay, just go there. I can memorize everything, of course. Okay, that's too huge to consider, only for a basic thing, but even though basically I forgot also. Okay, now, we go now, oh my god, it's time, 41 minutes and 24 seconds. The carbohydrates first is the first topic of this four main classes of macromolecules in biochemistry, but these carbohydrates will take too much time to discuss, really, because there's a lot of molecular structural formula for this also, okay? And we will, we will, I can just give you an overview for that, okay? Overview. Okay, when we go to the physical examination by a physician or a doctor, we have the medical results or the physical or medical examination results. So there are levels of triglycerides, right? So if your triglycerides would be more than 150 milligrams per deciliter, then you have the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, okay? obesity, overweight, something like that, okay? So, or you have a risk of disease called the alcoholic fatty liver or non-alcoholic fatty liver, okay? So, because these triglycerides are body fats. Body fats constitutes of a person, okay? Like that, so these are also having sugars because of the glycerol. I already discussed about that, right? Okay, so glycerol plus fatty acids. Okay, one component of glycerol plus three components of fatty acids. So the fatty acid could either be a unsaturated fatty acid, saturated fatty acid, and the trans fats, okay? So these fats categories have the specific food to eat. Okay, then if you will eat too much for that, it will cause your triglyceride level to go high. Okay, plus the sugar alcohol, which is the glycerol, so it will become high. And then, not only that, your cholesterol also will go high. Okay, because cholesterol is mainly carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen also. So, they are directly proportional with each other. So, if you have a high triglycerides, you have also that potential of high cholesterol level in your body, something like that, okay? These triglycerides are not really that hydrophilic. Some are hydrophilic, some are hydrophobic, okay? Some will be expelled as waste from our body. But this cholesterol is hydrophobic, meaning it has low affinity with water during the removal of our waste, urine, sweat, and everything. This cholesterol will only be posted in our main organs, like that. So that's why our blood flow circulation will be affected, especially the arteries of our heart will become thick and hardened because there's no proper blood flow circulation because there's a blood clot, because the blood vessels are not functioning properly due to the deposits of this cholesterol. Okay, like that. So meaning to say you will maintain your the triglycerides level below 150 milligrams per deciliter. So that's our indicator, okay? So triglycerides are part of carbohydrates, okay? 
like that. So this carbohydrate, CHO only, right? Oh my gosh. So carbohydrates, carbohydrates are many sugars, okay? Like that. I will discuss a little bit and I will discuss this uh, in detail tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow will be a little discussion because the time will not be enough, okay? I'm very, you know, I do other things, okay? Like this because, you know, I have only a small time. My gosh! Okay, I will discuss carbohydrates. Carbohydrates compels hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. Basic half, because it all starts with basic, because it, we will not understand that it will be lost, really, especially in the theories and principles during examination. Or not only in examination, in our day-to-day -day life, we must understand really, the, you know, the mechanics, or, you know, what really those macromolecules in biochemistry. Okay, like that. Okay, carbohydrates. This is the reason that not all sugars are sweet because some sugars are not sweet. For example, sugars from milk. Okay, like that. that those are not sweet also. That's not the real identification. Okay, because carbohydrates mainly are not sweet also. You can obtain them in sources in the plants. Okay, like that, vegetables. In fact, fruits also have carbohydrates, such foods. Okay, like that. So carbohydrates. But when we speak of carbohydrates, the, the formula will be the general one. Okay, carbohydrates composed of C. Kandanin lang natin. We represent x as the number of um, moles like this or n lang siya but or n siya it's one carbohydrates is let's say x atom of carbon x atom of hydrogen and x atom of oxygen now in basic understanding if you speak about carbohydrates that's mainly the combination of the polymer called glucose Okay, glucose. Okay, glucose. Okay, glucose. Okay, galactose. Galactose and fructose. Okay, like this. Okay, so remember this three, this have the same formula. Okay, six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen. Now, maltose, okay, you know maltose is a sugar also, right? Maltose, ripose, ribulose, <laughs> my gosh, or the glycerol, glycerol, sugar, alcohol sugar, the formula is not like this. Okay, do not be confused. And the sucrose is not also like this. Okay? That has another formula. So meaning to say, those sugars are already uh, repeating units of monomers. Okay. <laughs> so it becomes a polymer. Okay? So as a result of a chemical synthesis reaction or polymerization reaction so it's not direct meaning those are not those are not monosaccharides so these three are monosaccharides okay you understand monosaccharides meaning only one okay like that okay and there's no uh, other constituents okay and those sucrose, okay, maltose, charot, not talaga. Sucrose, maltose, sucrose and maltose already are disaccharides, okay, 
why disaccharides? Because these are uh, a combination of a monomer, a monomer sugar plus another monomer sugar. For example, glucose plus glucose, glucose plus fructose, okay? Like that. Understand the point? Okay. So the sucrose formula is another. That is the sugar, refined sugar that we have. It's refined already. Okay. Carbon 12, H22, O11. Okay. Like this. This is C6, H12, O6. And this one is. Okay. Carbon 12, H22. Okay. okay, this is based on my, you know, memory, but just review for the maltose, huh? I'm not really sure, okay? I'm sure with the glucose, galactose, and fructose have the same formula, C6H12O6, okay? So these are what we know as isomers, okay? Isomers. Isomers meaning the same composition or elemental components but differ in their molecular structural formula. Okay? Like that. And their behavior act in the physiological reaction inside living organisms or the plants and the animals. But the same general formula or the same elemental components or composition. There are six atoms of carbon, okay, 12 atoms of hydrogen, like that, and six atoms of oxygen for glucose, galactose, and fructose. Remember that one. Maltose and sucrose have another formula, which is carbon 12, H22, O11. So this can be obtained through polymerization reaction through okay dehydration synthesis okay meaning to say water okay water is added okay to glucose and water is added to fructose water is added to glucose to produce this maltose okay water is added to fructose to produce this sucrose Again, okay, water is added to fructose to produce sucrose, water is added to uh, glucose to produce maltose. Okay, so that means uh, dehydration synthesis for sucrose, okay, like that, and there's dehydration synthesis for maltose, something like that, okay. Like that. And then we have also the polysaccharides. Okay, this is monosaccharides, right? You will wonder why, Sir Sotero, why the triglycerides are not appearing there later on? Wait, oh my gosh. Monosaccharides, oh my gosh. And disaccharides. Disaccharides. Okay. Monosaccharides are glucose, okay, fructose, and the lactose. Disaccharides, maltose, and sucrose. Okay. Disaccharides means double sugars. Monomers, uh, monosaccharides means uh, single sugar or uh, simple sugar. Okay, but still under carbohydrates. Okay, and now we go to the polysaccharides. This polysaccharides, <laughs> like that, is a repeating units of monosaccharides or a repeating units of monomers. Okay, so basically, these monosaccharides are monomers. Okay, you understand? And these polysaccharides are polymers. That's the analogy behind, okay? Polysaccharides. Polysaccharides is a chain of sugar monomers, where it is a structural monosaccharides 
and disaccharides. In combination, okay? Like the combination of monosaccharides plus monosaccharides or combination of monosaccharides plus disaccharides like that, as long as it is a polymerization or combination of different monomers, okay, or, there, or different uh, disaccharides and monosaccharides, it's poly, okay, plenty or several, you know, reactions, something like that, okay? Understand, okay. Repeating units of mon monosaccharides. Repeating units of monosaccharides. But actually, sorry, this is already a uh, polysaccharides because dye is two, right? Sorry. Nobody will correct me that one. Disaccharide is already only because two up is poly, sorry. Okay. Okay. Polysaccharides are repeating units of monosaccharides. So monosaccharides is the monomer. Okay. Monomer is just general uh, to any substance that take up for single substance, for organic substance. And polymer is uh, you know is uh, general also for polysaccharides because we are referring now for sugars okay because as, as what i mentioned earlier the protein the carbohydrates the the lipid and the you know the nucleic acid are, those are uh yeah, polymers except for lipid that is very a small polymer small molecules only compared to the three Okay, like that. And in fact, sometimes lipid cannot be called as polymer due to its smaller molecules only. But it's still considered as macromolecules in the main classes. We include that or already. Okay? Like that. Okay, like polysaccharides. What are those examples of polysaccharides? This time, triglycerides will come in. Okay? This is an example of because triglycerides will be produced by glycolysis reaction, okay? Glycolysis reaction is the production of glycogen in a several glucose polymer or polymer glucose, something like that, okay? That's glycolysis. Glycolysis or glyco glycogen is under... Uh, metabolism, right? Study of biochemistry, but we touch a little bit on it. Okay? Like that. So, triglyceride is under in the polysaccharides. Okay? So, glycogen, example. So, Sir Shatero, what is glycogen? Oh my gosh. Okay. This glycogen is a polysaccharide sugars in animals, okay? Like that, polysaccharides, meaning group of sugars to animals. Animals included the human being, the living organisms, like that, okay? Glycogen, okay? Or we can call this a structural polysaccharides, okay? general also structural polysaccharides right glycogen is a polysaccharides okay or don't confuse the term i just understand the you know the, the main point the polymer glucose in the animals the animals, including the human, uh, or what we call as the polysaccharides, structural polysaccharides. Like that. Oh my God, no, if you will try to discuss, you know, in a detailed fashion, your time will be not enough, really. Okay, for example, if I'll become the professor in a certain university, then I'll be teaching. For example, by chemistry, chemistry, organic chemistry, whatever, chuba chu chu. Then my, my time will be finished because you know it's very lengthy. So it's better to write first one, two, three, four, fifth, and discuss. 
Okay. Like this. Okay. Like this. Polymer. Glycogen. Glycogen. Okay. This is a polymer glucose in the animals. Or let's just say storage. Storage. Because if we speak about glycogen, there are a lot of glucose there, stuck there. Okay. Inside our body. So this is storage or in the animals. Storage is the key term, right? Glycogen is the storage of polymer glucose. Okay, in the animals. Storage. So due to process, it will be converted to glucose, separate glucose, okay, which our bloodstream needed, the regulation of the blood glucose, like this, and, you know, the enzyme glucagon will signal the, you know, the insulin hormone that is going to be your deficient in glucose to the blood, then please add me more glucose, something like that, okay? So if very less, then you will add it's very high. Then you will add. So this, this is the role of insulin hormone. Okay? Like that. But the enzyme will catalyze the reaction to provide this glucose to the bloodstream. Okay? Signaling this uh, insulin hormone. Okay? Then after signaling this insulin hormone, it will send a message to the brain, our brain. Okay? It's going to be, okay, it more like this, at least like this. Something like that is just a game inside the physiological reaction in our, you know, physiological chemistry inside our body, something like that. Okay? So like that, storage of polymer glucose in the animals. Structure for the Glycogen. Okay. Look at this. Glycogen, the source of glycogen is through food. And the main source originally comes from the plants. Okay, like that. Okay, and this is found, this glycogen is found in the mitochondrion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mitochondrion of the plant. Okay, like that. Understand? So it will be subdivided into uh, glycogen granules in the mitochondrion, like that, blah, blah, blah. And the distance covered will be something uh, 1, 1.5 micrometer, like this. My gosh, technical aspect, okay? Do not memorize the technical, it's only, you know, only an uh, idea, okay? The distance or spaces of this uh, glycogen granules in the mitochondrion of the plant is 0.5 micrometer, oh my gosh. Okay, number two will be the starch. Oh my gosh. So that's why we have starch for cooking food. That is also polysaccharide sugars composed of so many, you know, glucose or so many monomer sugars. This starch. Okay. So later we will be showing you also the formula of starch. Oh my gosh, very difficult, right? But I love to do it and to share information for you. Guys, starch. Starch can be found in the chloroplast. Okay, in the chloroplast of the leaf. Okay, of the plant. Like that, okay? So there are sugars there in the chloroplast. Oh my God. The amylose, oh my gosh, <laughs> amylose and amylopectin, oh my gosh, amylose, goes higher, right? Amylose and amylopectin, okay, amylopectin, okay, so it's going to be like this, the starch, the starch are basically coming from uh, amylose and amylopectin. Okay. This type of sugars exist in the chloroplasts, which have a uh, distance of one micrometer with each other. Okay, like that. 
in the chloroplast, specifically this amylopectin. But this amylose and amylopectin are in the chloroplasts. That's why we can all paint starch. Okay? Like this. This starch is a polysaccharide, meaning multiple monosaccharides sugars. Okay? Or repeating units of single sugars or monosaccharides. Okay? Like that. Number three, we have the oh my god. Still you lose. Okay. Cellulose also is a sugar. Okay. This is a structural polysaccharide. Okay. The same with glycogen. And a polymer glucose also. Okay. The same as glycogen. The only difference is that because the cellulose is a major component structure of the cell wall of the plants. Cell wall in the membrane of the plant, okay? Major component structure, okay? Like that. Structural uh, polysaccharides. The same as glycogen, okay? Cellulose. Cellulose is also an example of polysaccharides, okay? The cellulose is a major component structure of a cell wall of a plant, okay? Like that. Understand? This is a structural polysaccharide and also a polymer glucose. Okay? And take note, this cellulose, again, maybe it will come out in the examination, cellulose is the most abundant organic compound in the planet Earth. Oh, we can on. Maybe you will be confused with which is the most abundant element in the planet Earth. Just uh, try to, to be smart at the key terms. A mo most abundant element in the planet Earth, element in single, that is oxygen. But in here, the most abundant organic compound in the planet Earth, that is cellulose. Because sometimes it will be confused, sometimes also in examination. We only uh, determine the abundant, the, the word abundant, but just scrutinize and examine the words. Okay, uh, do not be confused right away. For example, lung is, is the most abundant organic compound in the planet Earth. The answer will be cellulose, not the oxygen, because oxygen is not a compound in the first place, that is element. Okay, but the same uh, thought in the planet Earth. Okay, so in element, oxygen exists as an abundant, but in an organic compound, Exists as an abundant is the cellulose. And we don't know also in organic compound, which is the most abundant in organic compound in the planet Earth, in which I don't know. <laughs> because, but we need to discover their molecular weight as our basis of abundancy, right? Okay. Oh my gosh, abundancy talaga siya. Okay. Most abundant talaga. Most abundant organic compound or you can see in different manner is the most abundant structural polysaccharides in the planet earth or the most abundant polymer globus in the planet earth you can only uh, change the, the words because we have the other definition of cellulose or you can say the most abundant okay component structure of a cell wall of the plant in the planet Earth. <laughs> it's more difficult, my gosh. This is to make it simple only, huh? okay? In planet Earth. Of course, there's no cellulose in the stratosphere, hydrosphere, in the atmosphere, in the, you know, there, or in the galaxy, in the Milky Way, in the outer space. That's why I only considering planet Earth. But Hydrogen is another thing because it will uh, go to the atmosphere, it's a gas. Okay, so the, the statement is like this. Uh, the, it's the lightest element in the universe because hydrogen can evap and go to high as in the atmosphere. Something like this, okay? Blah, blah, blah. Mas abo na component planet Earth. The common sense. Okay, cellulose is the most... Can you read this one? 
is the most abundant volcanic compound in the planet Earth. Okay, this is the major component structure of the cell wall of the plant. This is a structural decentralized. This is a polymer logos. And take so 100 billion tons of cellulose per year will be produced all over the world in a global scale. Okay, remember that one, 100 billion tons. So one ton is equals to, one ton is equals to 1,000 pounds, something like that. One ton, and uh, one, one ton meaning one short ton, one ton, right? So one ton is equals to 1,000 uh, pounds, and then one metric ton is equal to 2,200 pounds. There are two definitions for that, okay? In, Conversion factor in mathematics, right? One ton is equal to 1,000 pounds. And then one metric ton is equal to 2,200 pounds. So you will only add metric to the ton and the uh, value will change. Be careful also. Something like that, right? I'm correct? Okay. I'm correct. Oh my gosh. I don't know how. <laughs> Based on my memory only. <laughs> One billion tons per year. So you will just convert this and you can determine how many tons, how many kilograms, like this, blah, blah, blah. Cellulose. Okay. Production. Because there are a lot of plants, trees all over the world. So this will be also reasonable enough, right? In the global scale. So global, global, not only one place, one country, one continent, global, all over the world. Okay, like this. Oh my gosh! 100 billion tons of cellulose per year protection in global scale. A structural polysaccharides or a polymer glucose. Okay, like that. So we have now three examples of polysaccharides, the glycogen, the starch, the cellulose, okay? And then we are now having the number, for example, the chitin. <laughs> Actually, this chitin, I only read this previously. Uh, in my chemical engineering you know, knowledge, I don't need this chitin <laughs> because you also studied sugars in organic chemistry. But not that very, you know, detailed because uh, that is the biochemistry, only organic chemistry. Okay, but if you talk about biochemistry, it will be detailed regarding the macromolecules because this is center of the biochemistry study, right? Organic chemistry are purely hydrocarbons, combination of carbon and hydrogen. But the others will not discuss now because it's not the focus of organic chemistry. Okay. Like that, but you know, just chitin. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Chitin. This is chitin. I will review chitin a little bit, but I am sure this chitin. <laughs> My God, this chitin is very. <laughs> It's a type of structural natural polysaccharides that is very useful for insects. You know insects? Okay, the, the bee, the grasshopper, the worm, like that. What else? The a lot, right? The caterpillar, like this. What else? Scorpions. A lot. So this Structural polysaccharide sugars are very important in these insects. Why? Because it will build up their, you know, skin surface on their body, which is known as the exoskeleton. Oh my gosh. Exoskeleton build up. Build up of, as human beings, we have our body, right? Composed of the skin, the muscles, tissues. The toes, the tendons, the cartilages, the ligaments, the joints, the tendons, blah, 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 so and so. But this chitin, oh, chitin, 
These insects I mentioned a while ago have the structural polysaccharides known as chitin, which build up exoskeleton. So the term pala is exoskeleton for the insects, for their body. Okay, exoskeleton. Just remember the word exo and add skeleton. Okay, this is for insects, huh? Okay, build up exoskeleton. This is the, maybe the hard casing on their body, hard casing in their body that surrounds the soft parts of their body. Okay, so it's just like a, a bone for them to survive, something like that. So hard casing that surrounds, oh my gosh, that surrounds the soft parts. Oh my gosh, so parts. Hard casing that surrounds the soft parts of their body. Okay, of N6 body na lang siya, to make it specific. N6 body. Chitin. Chitin, right? Chitin or chitin? But I'm sure, I, I think it's chitin. <laughs> Just review and correct me if this is chitin or chitin. Chitin, chitin. Okay, I will review for a while, ah. Huh? I will wrong. Okay. This is going to be the power of, you know, validating the information. It's going to be like this. Okay. This is not prepared, you know, the visual aid and write anything. This is, this is on the spot. Okay. I think this is chicken. Wow. I love the word chicken. Okay. That's why I'm interested in this. Wait for a while. I'm just uh, double checking the, you know, the term, if it's correct or not. It could either be chitin or chitin, but I think chitin, huh? Really? Based on the memory of Wow, 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 wow. Yes, it's a chitin. Okay, but only one T. Chitin, okay? Mr. Sotero, what is a chitin? Chitin. Mr. Sotero, what is a chitin? A chitin is a structural polysaccharide sugars that is very necessary to the insects as their exoskeleton hard casing that surrounds the soft parts of their body for their survival. So that is chitin. So like that, if there's a question like that, then you choose A, cellulose, B, glycogen, C, starch, B, chitin. Your answer will be chitin. Something like that, right? Okay. Chitin also have another application. The application will be in the, you know, the flexible and strong thread. Use it as a flexible and a strong thread for surgical operation. And now we know already. You know, we have the operation and we put the thread. That kind of thread is made of chitin. See? So, not, it's a sugar, polysaccharide sugar, but we don't eat that one. But it's made to the thread, P-H-R-E-A-D, surgical thread. Very hard and durable, like this, flexible shaft, meaning to stretch, like that. and then it will be go to your, for example, if you have an internal operation, surgical operation in your liver, you, you will use the surgical thread. And after that one, it will be decomposed because it's sugar, right? It's not a rubber or a plastic that will not be composed, okay? So it is biodegradable substance, okay? Because if we are using, if we're using non-biodegradable substances as a thread in your internal surgical operation, that, that will cause side effects also in your organs. That's why in medical science, we use the thread made of chitin, structural polysaccharide sugars, because it will decompose after your wounds will be healed in your surgical operation. Apidicitis, like this, Okay, or attention yes, Okay, so chitin is the component for that. Okay, not a rubber 
not uh, textile, not uh, what is plastic, okay? There's a lot of plastic, right? You, there's a polyethylene, high density polyethylene, polyethylene, okay, polycarbonates for making, uh, you know, uh, Tupperware, polyethylene plastics, like that. Or for the pipe, we have a uh, high density, you know, polyethylene, HDPE, high density polyethylene, okay? Like that, and then we have also the PVC pipe, the polyvinyl chloride composition for that. Okay, so if you try to examine the molecular structural formula of those parts, we can show to you the chemical reactions, why it is called a polyvinyl chloride, why it is called an HTPE, high density polyethylene. We can illustrate the chemical reactions, okay, like that, and polycarbonate and the polyethylene. Okay, like that. Okay, plastics industries, rubber and plastics industry, something like that. Okay, in chemical process industries. Okay, so going back to chitin. Okay. So now cellulose is a structural polysaccharide, a polymer glucose, but it's a storage of glycogen. Glycogen, cellulose, starch, and chitin. This and sucrose sucrose which is our table sugar that we put in our coffee so the formula is carbon 12 h 24 11 same with maltose okay like the only isomers with each other through dehydration synthesis okay reaction or polymerization reaction something like we have also monomers mono, monosaccharides for simple sugars okay which is the fructose, glucose, and lactose. This fructose, lactose, and glucose have the same formula, six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen, but differ only to their structural formula when you do the structural formula in the, or when you determine in the laboratory analysis during experimentation of this kind of monosaccharides or simple sugars. But these are all carbohydrates, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Triglycerides is under cell that can produce triglycerides, okay, in our body. And this must not be extinct on 50 milligrams per deciliter because this can cause arrest for diabetes, type 2 diabetes, obesity, uh, we have the inflammation of the liver, the fatty alcoholic liver, and the non-fatty alcoholic liver, two types, right? So alcoholic fatty liver meaning through excessive intake of alcohol sugars, okay, that come from the beer, the wine, the whiskey, or mainly the glycerols, alcohol sugar, okay? Think more of high carbs that which in glucose, okay, something like that. Okay, so the white bread are having too much for this kind of stress. Okay, understand now. So that's very important. So we need to avoid polysaccharides in the inner body, which is the triglycerides because of glycogen. But then on. Okay, so this will be enough. I'm touching only for carbohydrates. It's very long, right? I'm still not touching for the monosaccharides as far as I could remember in our chemical engineering, organic chemistry, I think so. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yes. yes, in organic chemistry, this uh, monosaccharide could be composed also of oh, this lactose, okay, and my <laughs> color. Right, both and the aman the glycerol behind. Oh my gosh. So that's why this glycerol is under with the glycerol behind. Okay, like that. Aldehyde family. You remember the aldehyde family in the organic chemistry? We have the formaldehyde. So this also is part of the aldehyde family, which is the glycerol dehyde. But take note, it exists as a separate. So meaning to say the behavior of this of this glycerol dehyde are two types. It can act as an aldehyde. <laughs> We can add also as a monosaccharide as part of carbohydrates. So powerful, this glycerol dehyde, okay? An example for this is glycerol, three atoms of carbon, 
Okay, five atoms of hydrogen times three times hydroxyl group. Oh my gosh. I'll show to you the formula uh, last two weeks, right? I need to show you. Oh my gosh. Like that's a uh, sugar alcohol, no, alcohol, sugar, sugar, alcohol. Okay, alcohol, sugar. The alcohol found in sugar. That's glycerol. Okay, like that. So since glycerol sugar, okay, glycerol is the definition of triglycerides plus the three fatty acids components, then normally your sugar will rise if you will drink too much alcoholic beverages. Okay, not only in eating fatty foods or you know or carbohydrates in each foods, not only that. Also, the alcoholic beverages. That's why also they are very fat. Their stomach is very big. Their is very big. That accumulation of you know alcohol sugar content that will lead to cholesterol deposits also higher deposits. Okay, so meaning that the danger is this cholesterol and the triglycerides. Meaning specific is that low density lipoprotein. Okay, for bad cholesterol. Okay. Because we need to have a good level of uh, bile acids in our liver for production also of fats and for the digestion of fats. Because fats are very needed because these fats uh, can store a lot, a lot amount of energy, a lot amount or amount of energy, large amount of energy or a lot amount of energy, lot amount of energy, programmer, large amount or lots of energy stored in this function. Storing. That's why if you will not release your energy, which is mainly polymer glucose as a waste, then it will stop normally in your body, right? So it will become turned up or visceral fats are growing like that because the energy are not decomposed like that, something like that. Okay, phospholipids. It's very important also for the body. And then after that. Uh, the last will be the new. I already discussed the protein, right? Center of genetics, right? The protein acids, the RNA and the DNA, the reoxyribonucleic acid and the oxyribonucleic acid DNA test, something like that, the transcription process, the more necessary, why the baby will become the stomach of a female due pregnancy, okay, due to a hormone called oxytocin. Okay, the oxytocin hormone will expand the, the baby in front in their petals or in the ovary. It will become big. Without this oxytocin hormone, the baby will not grow old. Okay? It's very clear. That's why the stomach of the woman will become big because there's a lot of oxytocin hormone that is responsible for the growth of that baby inside the ovary like this. Okay, oxytocin hormone, O X Y T O C I N. So hormone really is very important for our lives okay? because it controls body functions. Okay, and acts as a chemical messenger, as a substance that will, you know, triggers our cells and tissues, bind there, and it will uh, signals to the brain. Okay, that's so the messenger. It will to the brain. Messenger. Okay. Chemical substance messenger or chemical messenger for, body, for controlling our attention. Okay, they will react of it will be only speed up the reaction through the enzymes. It catalyzes the reaction. So we need those enzymes because these hormones will function properly, but if there will be no So it's really it's very you know interesting to study the physiological chemistry inside our body in relation to biochemistry. Uh, the study of chemical reactions and chemical processes in both plants and animals, something like that. Okay? So we need to, to recall the branches of biochemistry in relation to biochemical engineering also. Okay, so uh, literally, biochemical engineering is more on laboratory experimentation. Okay, more on, you know, observations, how they enter biological processes, for happening. These biological substances are, you know, carbohydrates, lipids, okay, and the nucleic acids and the protein, okay, like that, okay. So that's why we have all multivitamins also. Lipids are important also for our liver, 
right? It's for a liver will use also uh, cholesterol in the production of bile, okay? And this bile will help digest or produce also fat. And these fats will store energy. It will store energy in preparation in the next day, in the second day, like that, okay? So that it will be released. So what is bad here is that the overconsumption of fats. Okay, less consumption of fats is our best friend. And overconsumption of fats is our enemy. Okay, because you store a lot of energy as fats in our body, especially when your metabolism is very slow. How can that uh, will be decomposed into waste to be removed to your body? Okay, that's the point there. Okay, that's why it's very important to study the physiological chemistry of the human body. From the plants, like uh, the animals, in combination to the chemical reactions or chemical processes, or basically the chemistry. Okay? So, thank you so much for listening. The, uh, what, what, what's the title of that? I forgot. Okay, to human survival, but I'm having a chance. Okay? Okay, hi, Mr. David PK. Oh my gosh. Funny you chatted in here in the corner. Hi. Oh my gosh. David Peking is my avid viewer regarding my discussion of health science profession. But oh my gosh. Oh, I'm lost. Turning this live, then you can comment if you want to, and you can share if you want, and you can click the health bar sciences. Okay, because these are all related with health. Okay, the combination of science and health. Okay, it's occupational safety and health. And then for personal things like this. Okay, thank you so much. Give us a oh My God, I did not notice because I just keep on talking. <clears throat> Actually, let me go to make this. Okay, thank you so much. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye, everybody.